I'm not able to see who's actually on, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So in the name of the Most High God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the Most Compassionate, the Most Gracious, the Most Loving, the Biggest Warrior and Baddest Juice Power that there is, I come in that name and the name of his Christ and I am grateful and gracious for those who are joining on this live broadcast. And today's message following up with a couple weeks ago is manifesting your vision. And today we're going to be introducing key two. But just a brief recap of last week's or the week before message, we have been talking about manifesting your vision, which is a step-by-step -step process. And it comes with a set of keys that will open every door to your destiny and to your success. Yet, as we talked, yet as we talked about um, prior to, okay, I don't know what happened here. I'm still going live, so the video part disappeared. There we go. Okay, so let's bring that back up. Um, we talked about you having to be willing to go through the process and take the necessary steps to achieve your greatness. So in other messages, as I said before, I've discussed the steps to manifesting your vision, which is to think or have an idea, to believe that your idea is possible, to write it down, to speak about it, and then ultimately act upon, on it. And last week we gave the first key, which was cherish yourself. And I hope that you have applied that to your life and began working on taking the time to give yourself the love that you strive so hard to give others as well. So we, the first key was cherishing yourself. And we went into what that meant. Today, by the grace of God, I would like to introduce the second key. And the second key of manifesting your vision is to develop God confidence. Now, many of us have heard of self-confidence and self-confidence is having the attitude, having a certain attitude about your abilities, being able to have confidence in your own abilities. Um, self-confidence is about accepting and trusting yourself. It's about having a sense of control over your life and in your life. When you talk about self-confidence, you know what your strengths are. You know what your weaknesses are and you are working to making your strengths even greater and also turning your weaknesses into strengths. When you have self-confidence, you have a positive view of yourself. Regardless of what anyone else thinks, what anyone else says, self-confidence gives you that fortitude to have a certain positive outlook and perspective of yourself and your life. It also helps you to be able to set realistic expectations and goals. It helps you to be able to have the courage to communicate effectively and assertively being able to speak your mind and having the confidence and the courage to speak up when you need to speak up and then discerning when maybe perhaps you need to sit back and listen. Having self-confidence is about valuing yourself, having self-esteem and having self-worth. It's about being able to handle constructive feedback regardless of where it's coming from. And then finally, self-confidence is about valuing yourself and then in essence, valuing others. But today 
we're moving from that position or point of having self-confidence to developing God confidence. Now, self-confidence is important in the manifestation of your vision because self-confidence gives you this sense of freedom or gives you the freedom from doubt and and the negative thought processes. Sometimes when people don't have self-confidence or they have low self-esteem, they doubt themselves and they doubt their abilities. Sometimes they have ego going crazy in their mind. And when I say ego going crazy in their mind, I mean they have these negative thought processes. It's like they may have a vision or something they want to accomplish, a goal, or an idea, but they allow the negative self chatter to quiet that, that spirit within them that gives them that mm, to be able to go after their dreams. And so self-confidence is important because it, it, it gives you the freedom from self doubt and that negative thought process or the negative mind chatter. Yet, when we speak about God confidence, it's something that goes way beyond self-confidence. It goes beyond self-confidence. God confidence is the assurance, meaning the certainty in the goodwill and the veracity of God. God confidence is firmly trusting, boldly trusting his word and his promises for your life. It's to have full reliance, full trust on his power and knowing, not just believing, but knowing that God has the ability to deliver. So when you're relying on your self-confidence, which is important in terms of manifestation, because if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? If you don't believe in your gifts and your talents and your ability to conquer using your gifts and your talents, if you don't believe that you can use them and be successful and manifest your goals and your vision, then who else is going to believe in you? So it is important to have self-confidence. But God confidence is going beyond self-confidence. Now, this doesn't mean that when you have or when you develop God confidence that you lay down and you do nothing. It doesn't mean that you stop doing what you should do to manifest your dreams and your vision. It means that in the process of you having self-confidence and you believing in yourself and you're going after what it is you say you want to achieve, it means in the process of you going after your vision that you do it with the full assurity and trust that you will not and cannot fail. And the reason you will not and cannot fail is because you're not relying on your own power to make the things happen in your life that you desire to happen. So in order to develop God confidence, you do first have to have self-confidence. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your ability to accomplish what you set out to do. But in your self-confidence and your belief, and as you move forward to achieve your dream, you have to know for a surety that you will not and cannot fail, not because you in your own power won't fail, but because the power that is backing you never fails. And that's what God confidence is about. You must be a clear vessel for God to operate through you. See, God confidence takes that next step to say, God, I surrender to the power of you operating in my life. I therefore will open myself up to be a vessel for you to work through because I know that the work that I'm doing is not in my own power. It's in your power.
So you have to be willing to trust wholeheartedly the power of God operating through you and around you. So you must present yourself as a clear vessel for God to operate through, meaning you have to surrender wholeheartedly to him. And that requires trust in him and confidence in him. So woe to those who don't believe. Believing, not believing in God is like not believing in yourself because the Bible says that ye are God's children of the most high God. You know, a person in my life, I, I call him a wise person and he's growing in wisdom every day. He made the statement. He said, not having God in your life is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. So if you don't have a relationship with the most high, regardless of what you call him by, regardless of what walk of life you come from, regardless of the principles that you hold dear, if you don't have a relationship or if you don't believe that there's a higher power, then you're operating in your own power and your limitations limits you. But when you know that there is a mighty God that is backing you, that is limitless, that is powerful, that is all knowing, all powerful, compassionate, beneficent, who has, who's a transcendent reality, who goes beyond that which d d divides. When you know that there is a greater power backing you, but that power is not outside of yourself. It says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you recognize that there is a power within you that is greater than your own physical limitations, when you recognize that there is a higher power and you develop confidence in that higher power, you're developing what is called God confidence and you cannot fail. When you have a vision for your life, ask yourself the question, where did that vision come from? Where did it come from? And when you attempt to accomplish your vision and your goals and your objectives, where does that tenacity come from? Where does that fire come from? If you rely on yourself and your physical capacity to make things happen only, where does that lead you? What are you able to do with that mighty force and that mighty power that you are not able to do alone? When you have self-confidence, and you add God confidence to your self-confidence and you take that and you add or you back it up with action, you will not fail and you will for a surety, absolutely without any doubt, accomplish your goal and objective in life. It takes consistency. It takes belief in yourself and belief that there is a higher power back in you. It takes sometimes sacrifice. It takes focus. It takes the spirit of love for yourself and your fellow man. It takes wisdom and there's this, what I, what's called the serenity prayer. I grew up with this on my wall. Is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Wisdom is a key point. 
It takes wisdom to do things just a little bit differently. You know, sometimes we have this idea and this vision in our minds. Uh, sometimes people have a vision and an idea in their mind and they struggle with believing that it's even a possibility because they allow what's going on in the physical world to distract them or deter them or maybe to lose faith or hope. But when you have a vision that wells up in your spirit, you have to first of all know for a surety that it can happen. What you can conceive in your mind, in your heart, you can manifest it. But it takes work. It's not going to drop into your lap like this great big pie in the sky. It takes work. It takes the willingness and the willingness, it takes desire and your desire to accomplish your vision, your goal, your objective. You have to have desire that is greater than any struggle that it's going to take to get there because desire feeds your will. So if you don't eat, drink, sleep, talk, act, on what it is your goals and objective is. You have to be totally committed to what you want to accomplish without fail. And any doubt, you have to damn doubt. I'm gonna say that again, damn doubt. I'm gonna say it one more time, damn doubt. Have mad faith, have mad belief to accomplish what you set out to do. Because if you believe wholeheartedly that your vision in your mind's eye is a possibility, and if you believe that you cannot and will not fail, go full force ahead and accomplish what you set out to do. Now, you will have to do things a little bit differently. You can't do it in your own power. You have to be conscious and aware and awake that there are ways to do it that you may not have comprehended. But as you focus and move forward and what it is that you desire to do and you have the self-confidence coupled with the God confidence, which is the key, the second key is God confidence, knowing that there's a power back in you. And as long as you are in motion, as long as you are doing the work, and as long as you are believing that you cannot fail, you will not fail. And knowing that you don't have to do it in your own power. And don't just look for God in one place, look, look for God all around you. Every single thing that pops up and happens, know and see God's hand in it. Even if it looks negative, even if it looks hopeless, even if it looks like, oh my gosh, I have $2 in my bank account, but I require $10,000 to lay down as a deposit on this house, or, or I don't have good credit and I'm going to get this car. Know that you don't have to do it in your own power. And so I want to outline 10 scriptures. Now, I'm coming from the Bible today, but at the I Am a Network or the Church of I Am, we don't just believe in, in God's word that is outlined in the Bible. We believe in God's word that is outlined in the Holy Quran and all books of scripture, the Torah, all of the books of scripture, even books of principles, everything you pick up has God in it. And when you began to put that mind on, you can see God in everything. Even if the intentions of someone who wrote it or someone who spoke it is not good, not of God, God is always present. So when you put on the mind of God, you can see through all levels of BS and you can see the truth in every single thing but you have to come out of the world. 
You have to come out of looking at the situations from your carnal mind or your lower perspective. We're talking about manifesting your vision and, and, and achieving your destiny and success. And last week, we talked about the first key, which is cherishing yourself. And today's key, we're talking about God's God confidence, developing God confidence. And so there's a scripture reference in the Holy Quran that says God does not change the condition of a people until that people first change their own condition. What is that saying? What that is basically saying is you have work to do. If there is something in your mind and in your heart that you want to achieve, you have to first believe in yourself enough and have the self-confidence to move out on it and be consistent and stay focused. But also when you take that step forward and you believe in, in yourself and you're staying focused and you're being consistent and you're moving full first ahead, knowing that I can win then God steps in and takes 10 steps towards you. But today I wanna outline 10 reminders through the scriptural principle of the biblical text. And then I wanna kind of give the good old fashioned at home practical explanation for those who maybe are not in the Bible. Let me say this, if you never open a book in your life, now there is a saying that if you want to hide things from people of color, black folks, you hide it between the pages of a book. Well, I'm going to squash that today. It's 2022. Happy New Year to all of you who are watching and all of you all who hear this on the record. I want to squash that because you can't hide anything from God. And when you have on the mind of Christ, when you have on the mind of God, you see the truth regardless of where it is. Because not only is it written across your heart, but it's written in nature. You turn on the news, you're going to hear a word from God. You walk down the street, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're in the garden, hoeing your garden, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're taking your dog out for a walk, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're saddled up on your horse and you take a ride, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're making love to your spouse, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're playing with your children, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're in your kitchen, cooking a meal, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're washing the dishes, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're tuning up your car, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're running on the track, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're giving birth to your baby, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're washing your car, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're taking a bath, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're preaching your sermon, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're sitting in a circle or a Bible study or a life circle, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're watching YouTube videos, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're eating, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're scratching your backside or picking your nose, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're in school sitting trying to learn history or doing your math calculations, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're in an argument with your sister or your brother or your husband or your wife or your mother or your father, you're going to hear a word from God. God. If you're painting, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're singing a song, you're going to hear a word from God. If you're dancing and partying and drinking and having a good time, the worldly world, if you listen close enough, you're going to hear a word from God. It doesn't matter what you do where you are, what state of mind you're in, how you're feeling, you are going to hear a word of God when you are tuned up 
to make a change in your life. So there are 10 reminders from the biblical text that I want to give you and then briefly hit on the practical and the principal application in your life. Today, we're talking about manifesting your vision. There are so many people who let their visions die. They feel it's too late. It's never too late. And when you got breath, it's never too late. But let me tell those stubborn people who want to continue to do the same thing and expect a different result, which is insanity. You got to be willing to do things just a little bit differently. And if God blesses you with a word and someone to come into your life to support and help you, woe to the foolish men and women who deny and reject the help of God. Woe to you if you're struggling with your faith. Know that God always sends someone in your midst. And this is why the scripture says, be careful how you entertain people that you don't know or people that you don't really see or discern. Be careful how you entertain strangers because you could be entertaining angels unaware. You can be entertaining people who's anointed and favored by God. People who are filled with the Holy Spirit here to give you and bring you life, not in their own power, but through the power of God. See, sometimes you look at your children. Sometimes you look at your wife or your husband. Sometimes you look at your pet. Sometimes you look at your preacher. Sometimes you look at your sister or your brother. Or sometimes you look at the wino on the street. Or sometimes you look at somebody who you have very little respect for. Sometimes you look at people who you don't like and you think that you're looking at them. But what you didn't realize is God shape shifted and he possessed and came over that person who's delivering a word of life and truth. And so this is why the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. God don't operate with nepotism. You might favor this person you've known for 20 years. And so you allow them to get involved with this project or that project or allow them to be near to you. But the greatest blessing is to be near to the most high God. So the reminders as you develop your God confidence and you operate in self-confidence and you use wisdom and humility. Reminder number one is outlined in Jeremiah 29 and 11. And it says, God speaking, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. And God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. See, some people say, oh, God is a killer. God is this. Yes, God will destroy anything in the path that has ill intent. He will destroy it and break it down because he knows the plans that he has for you. And his intentions are to prosper you, to give you abundance. And so the word says that God came to give you life and give it more abundantly. So if you don't feel that you have abundance in your life, if you feel like everything that's coming to you, it seems to be bad or whatever, then you need to adjust your glasses. You need to put the spit in your eyes so you can really see what you need to see. And that's the power of God operating your life, regardless of what it looks like. Some things are just a smoke screen and it comes under a veil, but you have the ability to lift up the veil and see the hand of God operating in your life. 
So reminder number one, no matter what's going on in your life, regardless of what it looks like in the physical, you can't solve your physical problems in the physical, in the carnal. God's weapons are not the weapons of this world. And God can destroy that in a heartbeat. And Ezekiel talked about it, the wheel within a wheel. Some of you all call them UFOs. Some of you all call it unidentified flying objects. But no, there's a great power in the sky a power that has the ability in a twinkling of an eye to change your situation. And God will make your enemy your footstool. But you have to believe and know and understand what Jeremiah bear witness to in 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God does not desire destruction for you. You may doubt that. You may think you're not worthy. You may think you're just a sinner. You may think you are just filthy rags, but God said, I have the plans to prosper you and to give you a future. I seek no harm for you. I only want that which is good for you. So in your process of manifestation, you have to remember that God seeks to give you life and give it abundantly. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. God wants to give you a future and prosper you. He don't want you not to be able to pay your bills. He don't want your lights and your gas turned off, but sometimes he allows it. But the question is why? How do I move beyond my physical experience at this moment to set myself in heaven at once? How do I move from this hell of a condition and one of the reminders deal with that. It starts with you have to change the way you're looking at things. So you have to know that Jeremiah 29 and 11, believe that God wants what is good for you. Reminder number two, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work for the good of those who love God and who have been called according to his purpose. When God gives you a vision, he also makes a provision. So you may look at your situation, your car broke down on Highway 29. Mm, I don't know where that came from, but somebody right now is broken down on wherever Highway 29 is. Mm, I don't know where that is, but I'm gonna know in a minute but you might be broken down on highway 29. You might have a flat tire. Your battery might've died, but know that there's a reason that God has you there at the moment. Go look in the grass, look at the ants working, look at the grasshoppers jumping if they are, depending on where you are on I-29. Whoever that is, wherever that is, Know that God sees you and your help is on the way. But you have to believe it and not give up hope. Everything works to your greater good. So speaking to all of you who are listening on the live broadcast and who are listening on the record, everything happening in your life is for your greater good. But you have to believe that and you cannot allow your mind to play tricks on you because things don't physically look like you want them to look. See God's hand in it. Reminder number three. So before I go to number three, reminder, Jeremiah 20, 29 and 11, that's a reminder number one. God desires to prosper you, not to harm you. He wants to give you a hope 
He plans, not once, he plans to give you hope and a future. That means it is in the plan of God. And the Holy Quran says that we plan and God plans and God is the best of planners. So when the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, which is the first reminder, God plans to prosper you. He's going to prosper you. He's not going to harm you. He doesn't, doesn't plan to harm you. He plans to give you hope in the future. And then the second reminder, Romans 8, 28, everything that's going on in your life is for a higher purpose and a higher calling. Receive it as something good, no matter what it physically looks like, because you have to handle your physical issues from the realms of the spirit. So you got to tap into that God consciousness, that God confidence, and know that everything is working to your higher good. The third reminder is Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be given to you. Let's put that practically. Seek the mind of God. Seek God's way of doing things and how he looks at things and seek his mind, his excellence, his wisdom, his manner, and everything that you desire will happen because God doesn't look at things from below. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So if you're looking at it through your own eyes, you've already become tainted or your situation has become tainted because you have to raise or elevate your consciousness and your awareness and your level of thoughts. So when you want to manifest your destiny, your vision and succeed in this life and the lives to come, you have to first seek how God do things, his manner, his way, his excellence, his mind, and everything you desire will manifest and happen. So the fourth reminder, as we're discussing developing God confidence, which is the second key to manifesting your vision, is Romans 12 and 2. It says, do not conform to the ways of the world, but transform your life by renewing and transforming your mind. So basically you have to learn to do things God's way and not your own way. You failed so many times. You've tripped up so many times. You can't see your way through a paper bag most of the time. Sometimes those who seem to be tripping up and always seem that nothing can be going right. That's because you might be trying to do it God, the world's way when God is saying doing it my way. People are looking at this COVID situation. And they're giving COVID more power than the most high God. Do you know that the Bible says by his stripes, we are healed. Do you believe that? Or you, do you believe that COVID has power over God? God has power over every single thing. And COVID is something that he has allowed. But why? Why? Immunity. It's a test. Try God. Do not conform to the ways of the world, but transform your life by renewing and transforming your mind. Learn to do things God's way and not your own way. Because when you test God, when you try God, you can then prove that his word and his way is true. And you can prove to yourself and to others that God's way is good. It is pleasing and it is perfect. And perfection doesn't mean that you won't make a mistake. Perfection means you are still striving to fine tune and attune your vision and everything you desire to be and do. 
but you can't conform to the world's way of looking at things. You have to transform and renew your mind and begin to look through the lenses of the Most High God. So the fifth reminder, so I'm gonna run through reminders one through four. Remember that God has the plan to give you abundance, to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. He does not seek to harm you. Number two, which is out of Romans 8, 28. Now, reminder one is Jeremiah 29, 11. Reminder two, Romans 8, 28. Know that everything that's going on is for your higher good. So don't be discouraged. Just know everything that's gonna come out of what you're going through in your life is good, but you gotta believe that. You gotta know that. And then the third reminder recap in Matthew 6 and 33 is you gotta surrender to God first, get in his mind. That's the first thing you got to do is get into his wisdom, his mind, his manner of doing things. And everything else that you desire is going to be added to you. Your vision is going to be manifested, but you got to get in the mind of God. It's like if you have a team and everybody's going after a particular thing on this team. Okay, let's take a basketball game or a football game. The team members all have something set in their mind and that's to win there may be different plays that happen sometimes you might have a person go up for a jump shot that shot is blocked doesn't mean that you're going to lose the game because your shot was blocked it just means you got to fine tune square up get in your position and try it again and do that jump shot and sink it you may have someone running to go down driving down the middle to do a layup and they're filed so now they got to take a timeout, go ahead, let me sink a couple in and let me get back in the game. It doesn't mean you've lost the game. It just means you got to try another way and move another way to make, to sink that ball. Same thing with the football. The t I don't know much about football, I know a little bit, but if you if, if there's a down on the 10 yard dash, maybe somebody out there know better, but I'm gonna say it how, how it's coming to me, but you might get a down on the 10 yard dash or you might get tackled. Doesn't mean you lost the game. It just means you gotta plan and strategize so that you can take it all the way for a touchdown. See, that's how God confidence does. It doesn't get discouraged because you might get tackled on a 10 yard dash or you might get fouled or the ball might get stolen when you are trying to get down the half court. It just means you got to readjust, realign, but remember that the victory already belongs to you. You don't quit the game. You don't call the game because maybe there was a play in the game that didn't go the way you want it to. Life is the same way. You don't give up before you have manifested your vision. You got to seek God first and everything's going to be added unto you. And to recap the fourth reminder, you got to transform your mind so that you can transform your life. If you've always done something this way and it didn't work, then find another way to do it. Don't stay in your comfort zone because I trust me, 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 me. I got so much self-confidence that you don't realize there's a higher power that's backing you. So you got to go beyond that self-confidence, go beyond your own power and know that there's a greater power operating and working in your life. And that's the power you have to rely on. And that's the power you have to hold on to, stay plugged into. And that's the power that's going to take you all the way to the touchdown. That's the power that's going to take you all the way to winning the championship. It's going to take you all the way down the court to make that slam dunk. And if things are too hot in a certain area, that's the power that's going to have you in the three, uh, three point range. That's going to let you square up, shoot it and sink it. So the fifth reminder is Isaiah 55 and 8. 
God is reminding you, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. You don't even know how to do it the way God does it. God puts finesse with it. He jazzes it up. He makes it interesting. He makes it exciting. He feeds the will and gives you the passion to go after it. Sometimes people get so self-righteous, they get so in a box and try to box God in that they think there's only one way to do something. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of what you used to doing. People, we've always done this way, so we're going to always do it that way. Shut up. Learn to do things just a little bit differently. If you're not where you want to be in your life right now, take a look at how you've done things throughout your life and then try something different. If it's working, if it's not broke, don't fix it, but add a little more oomph to the pot. So the fifth reminder is God's reminding you that your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. God does things in a certain way because he sees every single thing. So if you're on the ground, if you're in your lower self, in your lower nature, you can't even see the things that's going on. You can only see a certain peripheral or your perception is only can go so far. But when you elevate yourself, when you elevate, imagine being on the ground in an airplane or a helicopter, right? Imagine yourself on the ground. You can only see so much, but when you begin to take off and you start flying, you can see more. And the higher you go, you can see more and more. You have an aerial perspective. You got to start looking at things the way God looks at them, but you got to get in his mind. So God is reminding you the importance of developing God consciousness that he is saying, I can see things a little bit more clearer. So here, put on these glasses and look through the, my lenses and not your own. The sixth reminder is Hebrew 11 and one. Now faith, not yesterday faith, now faith, not tomorrow's faith, now faith, not last year's faith, now faith, not when you were a child's faith, now faith, not how you used to do it before, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and desire and the assurance about what we don't see. So the way Hebrews 11 and 1 says is now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Basically, it's saying your faith right now, it's, it's living faith, is having the confidence in what you desire and hope for in your life and knowing for a surety that even though you don't see it at the moment, you still believe in it. You still believe in it, even though you don't see it. But you, uh, you get into the spirit and you allow your spiritual eyes to see that which doesn't exist yet in the physical. And that's what having a vision is about. It's about taking what's in your mind's eye and manifest it in the physical domain. And it's possible. So that's the reminder number six, Hebrews 11 and 1. Mark, the seventh reminder is Mark 9 and 23. And this is a big one. All things are possible to those who believe. If you got a vision in your heart and mind, you're not going to go after it full force unless you believe that it's a possibility. 
And what God is saying is that it's possible. If you can conceive it in your mind, you can achieve it. If you can see it in your mind's eye, you can manifest that thing into the physical domain. But you got to believe it. Because when you believe something and you know for a surety, and I'm going to take it beyond the belief, when you know that it can happen because you have God confidence, you don't let up. You keep going until you achieve it, no matter how long it takes. I remember that I said I was going to be a doctor. And I thought it was going to be a medical doctor. And I prepared to take the MCAT. I did all the things that I was going to do. And I realized, hmm, my mother said, how are you going to become a medical doctor? You can't even stay in the side of blood. <laughs> but the reality is I knew I was going to become a doctor. At a certain point, I knew it wasn't going to be a medical doctor, but it was going to be another kind of doctor. I never let go of that vision. And then I renewed the vision. And I realized, ah, little bird tapped on my shoulders. It's time. It's time. It's time. Some of you caught that. It's time. It's time. It's time. Yeah, you over there sitting up in your living room by yourself trying to figure out how you're going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm talking to you. It's time. It's time. It's time. You got on a red shirt. You know who you are. You sitting up there with a red shirt on, scratching your head, trying to figure out how you're going to accomplish something. It's time. It's time. It's time. And you over there with the green pants and the green top on. You got on like green pajama pants. It might have some little prints in it. Yeah, I'm talking to you too. It's time. It's time. It's time. I'm only giving you what God has given me. So remember, as Mark 9 and 23 says, all things are possible when you believe. You have to start believing in the power that is operating in your life. But if you're so frantic over what you think you see in the world, which is just an illusion, you get caught up in the chaos. But let me tell you something. The, the, the safety is in the eye of the storm. You got to believe. You got to believe in the magic. You got to believe in the power. There's a song by the Sounds of Blackness called Believe. Yeah, you in the green pants and the green top. Go listen to that. And the way you be dancing and rolling and whining and doing your thing, you go dance to that and let the spirit of God lift you up and build you up and know that you can do it and you can win. See, our visions or your visions, I'm talking to all of us who are present on the live uh, stream or those who are listening to the recording. See, your vision is not waiting to be shaped and formed. That thing that you desire is not waiting to uh, happen or to be formed. It's already formed. It's at the end of that finish line, just waiting for you to be prepared to go take it and take it in your hands. So the eighth reminder comes from James 2 and 26. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works or deeds is dead. Faith without works is dead. In the practical and the principle, basically just like if you lack the power, the passion, the veracity, the venacity, the wherewithal, if you lack that life, that energy, that assertiveness, that fire that burns deep in your soul. If you lack that, you don't have the juice that you need to manifest your vision. You have to be on fire for that which you say you desire. And then because it's that fire. Fire. It's that desire that feeds the will to get up every day at five o'clock and work out because you 250 pounds and you want to get down to 125 or 140. It's the fire, the passion that burns deep in your soul. It's that desire that feeds your will to live life and live it to the fullest. So just as if you don't have that fire, if you don't have that passion, that vigor burning down in your soul for your vision and your gifts and your talents, you're not going to have the work. 
You're not going to do the work that is necessary to achieve it because your desire has to be stronger than that struggle. And trust me, there's going to be some struggles, but you got to kick that door open. As a matter of fact, create your own doggone door. So faith without works is dead. Just like if you don't have that passion, you're lifeless. You're, you're energeticless. You're just listless. You're not alive. Your mind is not quick, swift. So James 2 and 26 says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead because you're not gonna work if you don't have belief. And if you don't, and belief comes from that fire and that passion. And if you don't have that fire and passion, that means you ain't believing in yourself. So reminder number nine, as we wrap up, Philippians 2 and 13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his purpose. I'm gonna read that again. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. I'm gonna say it one more time. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his purpose. And that's from Philippians 2 and 13. Basically is what that saying is, is that lamp that's sitting in your living room, that light that you flick on in your kitchen or your bathroom, or as you come up the steps into your apartment or your living room or wherever, or in your bedroom, that light that is turned on has to be plugged in or has to be connected to an energy source. So basically Philippians 2 and 13 is basically saying that it's God who's doing the doing. So if you ain't plugged in the source, you don't got no juice. And I know that's grammatically incorrect, but I'm making it as plain as I know how to be. If you're not plugged into source, you have no juice. And then you have to ask yourself, why aren't I plugged into God? You can't develop God confidence if you ain't plugged into him, because that means you ain't trying them. You trying yourself, you might be trying other people, but you ain't tried God. When was the last time you tried God? Hmm. You want a new car, a new house or a house or some land, or you want a, a husband or a wife. You want some children. Oh, you want to get a pet. You want your career to take off. You want to publish your album. You want, you want, you want, but you ain't plugged in because the source of everything is God and you can take that or let it alone. And right now, some of those people who do believe, they going to the bank right now and cash in that check because they're plugged in. So Philippians 2 and 13 is a reminder, is reminding you that it's God who is works in you to even will you to do and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And he has plans for you, as we, we talked about in the reminder, number one. So then Philippians 2 and 13 is the last. So I didn't have 10, I had nine, but I guess I do have nine because there's one more thing that God gave me because I did mention 10. So he's helped me to make my word bond. But you have to surrender all to the most high and be a vessel for his light to operate in you. You can't do it without being a complete surrender. But the 10th thing is for those who always talk in negative and oh, it's too late or oh, shut up. Oh, I ain't trying to do, you just trying to do in your, speak to those things that are not. This is the 10th one. Speak to those things that are not as if they are. And let me see what scripture that is. Just a second. So that comes out of Romans 4 and 17. So basically Romans 4 and 17 is telling you to speak to those things that, that are not as if they are. There's power on your tongue. 
And if you don't understand the power of your tongue, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Basically what that's saying is when you speak it from your mouth, your words don't return void. So be careful what you say. Because the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not, is God who gives life. Your word does not return void. So you got to speak that thing into existence. You have to speak life over your situation. If you're speaking to your death or to your detriment, then you're causing your own demise. Don't blame that on God. Don't blame that on your ancestors. Don't blame that on your neighbor or your boss or your mother or your father or your sister or your brother or your mom or your child. You can't blame your lack of success on anybody but you. Because you have to do your due diligence to manifest what it is that you have in your heart. And yes, it takes work. But a word to the wise, speak life. Decree and declare in the name of God and the power of everything that he is in your life. Because the power is on your tongue. So if you working hard and working hard and working hard and saying you believe and you believe and you believe, but you keep saying, oh, I'm never going to get this accomplished. Oh, it's going to take years. Oh my gosh, my feet are killing me. Oh, it's too late. That's what you manifesting. So you got to be wise. And this is why God said your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. God never condemned the darkness. God said, let there be light. God decreed and declared what it is that he wanted to exist and to manifest and he called it into existence. So I'm saying to you who are listening, regardless of whether you're listening on the record or whether you're listening live, call that thing into existence. Every day you get up, decree and declare, I am successful. I am manifesting that land. I am manifesting that new car. I am manifesting good health. I am, and then I, by his stripes, I'm healed. Live your best life. Let me tell you something about my sister. I have a sister, a biological sister who has multiple sclerosis. They say she has high, I say they say she has high blood pressure and diabetes. But let me tell you something. And she had was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis many years ago, maybe 20 years ago. But guess what? She'll tell you in a minute, I'm living my best life. She'll tell you multiple sclerosis doesn't have me. I have multiple sclerosis. But I'm even telling her and sending a message out to her. Don't claim that thing. By his stripes, you are healed. She gets in her car. She drive from state to state. She'll drive 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours. She don't let nothing get in her way. And I respect and I honor her for that. Because she doesn't go, woe is me. She get up every day. After she done rested, she gets up and she decrees and declares that I'm going to live my life to the fullest. And she's not lazy about it. And it's okay that sometimes you have a lazy day. But you got to believe in the power of God operating in your life. And you got to move with life. So very quickly, I'm going to run through the reminders. Today's message was about manifesting your vision. And we talked about the steps. The steps is thinking, having the idea or the vision in the first place, believing that your vision and idea can be manifested, writing it down, that's key, speaking about it, and then acting on it. And then those are the steps to manifesting your vision, but there are keys that come along with that process. And the first key that we talked about a couple weeks ago is cherish yourself. So you can go listen to that one, it's on YouTube. You go just type in Dr. Atia and um, cherish yourself and you should be able to find that on Google. But this second key that we're talking about today is developing God confidence. So that's the second key. And as the reminders, as you're developing the second key, these are reminders for you to understand and that's that oomph that gives you or that power that gives you to remember because you stand on God's word. God confidence is about having confidence in his word and his way. And so that first reminder really quickly coming out of Jeremiah 29 and 11, and then we're going to wrap it up and close it out. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I plan to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Remember that. So whatever's going on, remember that God doesn't want to harm you. 
He doesn't seek to harm you or to destroy you. He only seeks to build you up and to prosper you and give you a future. Reminder number two, Romans 8, 28. Everything that's going on in your life works to your higher good. Believe that. You're not going to fail regardless of what it looks like. Keep believing. Keep the faith. Keep the hope. Everything that's happening, look at it. Find the silver lining. There's a silver lining there. Find it. Number three, the third reminder, Matthew 6 and 33, seek God first, surrender, seek his wisdom, seek his mind, seek to do things the way he does it. And remember, when you do that, everything that you're wanting to happen is going to come to pass. Be consistent. So seek the kingdom is mind. It's the God mind. It's the ruler mind. Seek that ruler mindship, that leader mindship. Self-mastery, seek that. The fourth reminder, Romans 12 and two, don't conform to the way everybody else is seeing things of the world. Don't conform to that, but be renewed in your mind so that you can transform your life. So be transformed by how you think. Start thinking differently. Start elevating your thought process and not conform to this woe is me. Not conform to you can't do it. Not conform that, oh my gosh, this. Don't conform to the ways of the world, but transform your life by elevating your thought process. That's key. So if you're looking at a situation that may be sad, you may be worried, you may be concerned, transform your mind and know that life is in this. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, I'm afraid, I'm fearing this. No, begin to think positive and transform your life in your situation. Fifth reminder, Isaiah 55 and eight. Remember that God has an elevated thought process. Get into his mind. Where he says, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. So look to source to find out what is his thoughts, what is his way, and go and, and, and I don't want to say imitate, but pattern yourself after that. You're made in his image and likeness. Pattern, be, be who you are, God. Child of the most high God. Reminder six, Hebrews 11 and one. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and desire and the assurance in what we don't see. Just because you don't physically see it manifested yet, don't stop, keep going. You're bound to make that touchdown. You're bound to make that jump shot, but you have to keep going. You have to be faithful at every moment, believe in every moment, no matter what's happening, have confidence that you can win. You can do it. Don't lose the faith. No matter how bleak things might look sometimes, no matter if you have setbacks, keep the faith at every moment. That's what Hebrews 11 and 1 is telling you. The reminder, Mark, the seventh reminder, Mark 9 and 23. Remember that everything you desire is possible. Don't matter if you haven't achieved it yet, it's possible. So keep remembering. It's not impossible. Remembering the word impossible, I'm possible. So keep going and keep believing that it's possible. Don't give up on your vision. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your hopes. You wanted to fly a helicopter just because you're 52 or 53 or 60 or however, you can still fly a helicopter. They have flight schools. They have people who just want to teach others how to fly. You can fly a helicopter. Even if it's just take, take, pulling that thing up in the air and going 10 feet across, Fulfill your dream to fly a helicopter. It's never too late as long as you have breath. The thing is you have to be willing to keep going. Don't give up on your vision. Don't give up on your dreams. And that's basically what Mark 9 and 23 is saying is all things are possible to those who believe. Keep the belief in yourself. Reminder eight, James 2 and 26. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Remember, if you don't have the excitement for what it is you want, you say you want to do, who else is going to have that excitement for you? Have that excitement and keep believing and keep working. You got to work every day towards that which you desire to do. Some people say, I want to be, uh, I want to get my PhD, but they ain't step foot in a classroom, whether it's a physical classroom or online. 
Some people say I want to become a great artist, but they haven't painted one picture. They haven't even gone to to uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever stores out there to even buy the paint. They don't even know what medium they want to paint in, whether it's watercolor, oil or acrylic. Some people say they want a new car. They haven't even gone out to test drive any cars. Faith without works is dead. You got to move and take action in the direction of that which you say you desire. So the ninth thing, the ninth reminder, Philippians 2 and 32, for is God working in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his purpose. Remember that you ain't doing it, so you got to remain humble. You can't be arrogant. Be grateful and practice gratitude because everything that you're able to do is because of source. It's because of the God that is in you working through you. And then the final and 10th one, that means you got to, well, the, the ninth, before I go to the 10th, surrender all to the most high and be that vessel and recognize that you're just a vessel. You're not the all in all. Remember the all in all is working in you. There's a transcendent reality that's operating, the light of God operating in you. So remember that and remain humble and practice gratitude because it's not about your works. It's about the condition of your heart. You can't work your way into heaven, as they say. It's God's mercy and it's grace. So that keeps you humble. Doesn't mean you don't work because you got to work but it's his grace. It's like a, 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 a daughter or a son who's in school and you, their parents see that they're working hard. They're working to get straight A's or A's and B's and they're working and they're working and they're working. A parent is gonna reward a child that is working to maintain an A and a B than someone who's out partying and say, dad, mom, can I have some money? But then you have that other child who's, Focus and studying and doing the work to accomplish the good grades. Who do you think the parent is going to reward? Faster. That's God. So the 10 things is use the power of your tongue to speak life into your situation in life. Speak to those things that are not as if they are. And that's the 10th the reminder, which is coming out of Romans 4 and 17. You gotta speak life into that situation. So I thank you so much for listening and joining us today. And if you weren't live, enjoyed this um, on the record. And as we opened, we like to close and thank the most high God for his mercy, his grace, his compassion, his love, his unending and unyielding love. And, and for him getting into our affairs, his willingness to be a part of our lives to help us achieve that which we were born to achieve. And so you can manifest your vision and the keys we're going to pick it up next week. But the first key is cherish yourself. The second key, develop God confidence. And next week, praise God. Some people say, be it the will of almighty God. I say, praise God, because I'm speaking that thing into existence. We're going to talk about the third key. And I'm going to wait until the spirit of God gives me what that third key is. So as we opened in the name of Almighty God, the most compassionate, the beneficent, the merciful, so shall we close. And to all my brothers and sisters, whether you're in Islam, assalamu alaikum, whether you're in the church, praise God and may God be with you. Um, namaste, hotep, ashe, regardless of where you come from, know that you are loved and may God be with you. Peace, love, and light.